July 1st, Radley College. The theatre was booked. The critics had their pens ready. The Cannes Film Festival was poised and Steven Spielberg was on speed dial. Pass was to be the cinematic event of the year, the culmination of a year's worth of work, including script writing, casting, filming, and post-production. But this, however, is the tale how ultimately it didn't quite come to pass. To begin with, let's cast our eyes back to a different time, indeed, a simpler time, to January the 25th, or perhaps it was January the 20th. Oh well, anyway, who really cares? One wintry Saturday, to avoid the rigours of the playing field, I secreted myself away and constructed more than 50 pages of witty bandinage. Whilst this may seem an impressive achievement for one afternoon's work, I had actually been thinking about writing a film script for over a year. I wanted something ambitious in scope, but also recognised that I had to create something that would be filmable within a school context. Since I was in my GCSE year and, um, furiously revising, I based the story around an exam heist. The film takes its inspiration from a variety of sources. To some extent, it's an update of Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus. But rather than selling his soul for all the knowledge in the world, my schoolboy hero would sell his soul in return for rather more specific knowledge, the answers to the school's end of term exams. The college environment allowed me to use what I knew in my writing, but I also wanted to play on people's perceptions of public schools and exaggerated this image for comedic purposes. Mania side of it, the fact it was um, completely daft. Daft things happen, like the um, was it the Beagles attacking a boy, um, or whatever, whatever you put in. You could just about believe it happening if you put it in a film. As with most comedy, character lies at the heart of pass and I wanted to make the script relatable. I think that very few of us would not have considered cheating during the exam period, or perhaps that's just me. I wanted to make Paul likeable, and the dialogue between Paul and his best friend James should strike a chord with any pupil in the same situation. There was clearly also an everyday quality to Simon, the guardian angel. Simon, the guardian angel, seems minded to tempt Paul to the dark side, and perhaps juxtaposes the more traditional angelic elements that one would expect. In part, this is to keep the plot light, but also a realisation, even at the script writing stage, that an amateur film budget might not run to much in terms of supernatural CGI effects. The angel was very good as well. It was so clever, really, the way the script worked and the way he used it, because uh, here's this angel. But unlike the angels we th normally think about, um, he was a little bit, um, a little bit dodgy. With my main characters written, I decided to turn to the villain of the piece, French detective Laszlo Vilbecran. Whilst Vilbecran owes much to his characterization as an amalgam of screen classics such as Inspector Clouseau and Hercule Poirot, I cannot pretend that I had not already envisioned Mr. Barlas, head of French at Radley College in that role, adding some of his unadulterated style to the character. Whilst the Parisian sequences may have presented some challenges in the Oxfordshire countryside, I believe a lot could be suggested with a beret and a baguette. Yeah, he would have been fantastic. As soon as I completed the script, I sent it to MPH, head of the video unit at Radley, although by the end of the filming, he was just Max to me. Being completely new to the filmmaking process, it was great to have his professional take on the script. I thought it was the best script I'd ever read for a proposal for a movie. It was funny, clever, it had a good start and a good finish. The finish is always the hardest bit in the film, I think, to make it end in a, in a way that's um, entertaining and rounds it off. It just seemed to have everything. It looked difficult to film, but not so difficult that it was impossible. Kindly offered all the resources of the department and advised on what equipment would be most suitable for different scenes. Best of all, I got access to the video buggy. When it came to casting, I enlisted the help of A-Social's drama scholar and resident Republican, Wit Cook. Auditions were scheduled and casting started to take shape. It was important to find actors who would be able to balance their schoolwork and other commitments on top of the film project, and I was fortunate to find some very capable players. The other actors, yeah, top quality. Yeah. 
Archie Hedges, the main character, spent so much of the time looking beautifully confused, like Arthur Dent in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That sort of um, confused what's going on around you and everything's happening and the whole world has gone mad and you're just a confused character in the middle of it. With the team assembled, I realised I had to start looking at how I wanted to direct my film. I looked at a variety of films to foster inspiration and creativity, and also because I wanted to watch some movies. As the popcorn went down, my cinematic appreciation increased as I assimilated as much as possible from masters of the genre. I respected the symmetrical framing of a Wes Anderson picture, the crisp dialogue of Quentin Tarantino, and the explosions of Michael Bay, auteur of the seminal Transformers movies. Whilst amateur filmmaking can sometimes err on the drab and worthy, I wanted Pass to create a vivid impression. I put a strong focus on adding colour where possible, in part to contrast with the uniform nature of conventional school life. Clever stuff indeed. This was to emphasise the comedic nature of the film, with our later scenes taking full advantage of my tropical wardrobe, and the angel wings from Leanne's costume workshop over in the drama department. So we had the script, the actors and the equipment. Now it was just a case of saying action. And this is when the problems began. Getting everyone and everything in the right place at the right time and sufficiently rehearsed was an enormous challenge. As it transpires, oboe lessons, away matches and whatnot do very much get in the way of professional cinema. My original plan had been to allocate filming slots in which on a weekly basis I could take a judgement on what scenes we would film. I swiftly realised that time management must be the biggest skill of an amateur director. From week to week I would have to manage diary commitments for typically up to six people at any one time, whilst managing continuity so that my stars did not have haircuts that grew shorter over time. As managing people was such a challenge, I sustained my enthusiasm for the project by focusing on the end product. It provided a chance to stretch my marketing prowess with a range of delightfully eclectic merchandise, including t-shirts, mugs, and yes, the world famous Pass Instagram account, reaching a peak of 25 followers. The account verged on influencer level and it proved the perfect platform to announce updates to the small yet caring audience and some truly revelatory on-set pictures. Our first scene took place in the JCR under Mansion. A limited amount of time slightly pressured the filming, but fortunately we were able to complete the scene. The main challenges for this scene came in the editing room, where the dual camera setup and multiple takes made it a challenge to put together a coherent edit. One of the hardest parts of the project was the editing process, and whilst it had presented challenges, the first sequence proved the cast and crew knew what they were doing and that we were well set up for future filming. Interesting place to film as well, and lots of boys have never been there, which makes it interesting to them. I thought the location was ideal, and the way the scene went was pretty near perfect. And the issue perhaps was one or two boys didn't know their lines very well, and that does slow things down enormously. Okay, let's go, I like where we start here. Yeah. Okay, so, right. Okay. Um, hold the car. Down, down a bit. Was that much like a good one? It was, no, that's too, because there's like a shadow. Well, actually, I won't see that. Yeah. It, it was a hard scene because there were several people sitting around a table, and it's quite difficult to get the angles right. And I think you were using, you decided to use two cameras. Um, and the problem yeah, so we had the we had the FS5 and the Ronin. That's right. And the problem whenever you have two cameras is making sure the lighting is right for both and making sure that one camera doesn't see the other camera. What did he say? He says that unless I change my ways, I'm out. Expulsion, that's tough. Did you hear, by the way? Apparently, one of the newspapers uncovered a story that he's an exotic dancer before he took up a career in education. That's such bollocks. How come I've never heard of it? Well, I'm just saying he was quite famous. Although, of course, he's never admitted anything. What does the headmaster mean when he says change your ways? He wants me to do well in the upcoming exams. Oh, that's going to be tough.
Our second scene featured our thespian in training, George Curling, and presented the huge challenge of filming al fresco. Things began poorly with absolutely awful weather. Bugger like cold. Although morale remained moderately high, the situation deteriorated with a surprising amount of traffic flow through the Memorial Arch, the location of our filming. Perhaps the greatest issue of this sequence was the variable lighting caused by filming at dusk. Um, well, the cars, cars were... <laughs> I thought there'd be a lot of cars, but I had no idea there'd be that many. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we did have problems. It is a very hard place to film in. And then the weather is always a problem. It's, it's uh, rarely perfect. There are also varying degrees of professionalism amongst the actors, with some proving far more accurate in their line learning than others. Obviously, as a director who also wrote the script, I was a little sensitive to this flagrant disregard to the niceties of my bon mot. We were also troubled again with heavy traffic through the arch, which at least I suppose dulled the impact of some of the misread lines. Arch edges. The lines, I'd say, weren't quite where they needed to be for that part. What would be your rating of the uh, the general the general morale of the film crew and cast? I would say it would be from a light depressed to a heavy kind of suicidal. Oi! Whoa! Up here! How do you know my name? So predictable. How do you know my name? It pisses me off. Anyways, come up here because I'm locked on the roof and I need your help. Oh, you're here. Thanks for that. Anyway, to business. I am your guardian angel. Yeah, that doesn't really help. Huh. Why does it smell of cigarette smoke up here? Oh yeah. Have one on the way down. You get cigarettes in heaven. Yeah, obviously. Jesus is a 20 a day kind of guy. And besides, duty free. So, what's your name? My name? Well, yeah, you're an angel, so surely you have some sort of angelic name like Augustus or Cherubim. Well, if you must know, it's Simon. Simon? Uh, that doesn't exactly exude angelic elegance. Does it? All right, Paul. Oh, Jesus. I wouldn't say that if I were you. House of God and all that. Right. Forgive me if I'm not too excited about seeing you. Come on, Paul. I want to apologise. Look, that mark scheme has ruined my chances. It gave me a taste of the high life before being cruelly taken away. And now I'm being chased by thugs and a debonair Frenchman. I've been corrupted. Oh dear. Looks like giving you that mark scheme wasn't a good idea after all. But come on. You didn't need all that stuff. Surely there are more important things than a few status possessions. You lost your friend. Isn't that more important to you? But saying that, that fur coat was splendid. You know, thinking about it, materialistic possessions are a way safer bet. You know, you've got a point, Simon. No, 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 mate. Seriously, bad idea. No, Simon, you've hit the nail on the head. I let my friend down, and that was the worst thing I could have done. No, 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 this won't do at all. Thank you! Well, I think you're making the wrong decision. But if you like the service, give us some good feedback. What a strange boy. Perhaps the greatest success of our filming was the chapel scene. It was efficient, we weren't hindered by the weather, and the actors had actually learnt their lines. Indeed, it also had one of the best special effects in the entire project. Perhaps it was also the gold standard of the whole filming process. That was a good scene and it was quite fun because of the lack of pressure, the fact that you had plenty of time. It was quite a gold standard. Flying the drone in the chapel for one for a start. Mm. Uh, we got some really nice shots there. The fade of curling fading out the end, that was brilliant. So the Play acting was, was immensely hard. You had to uh, have the dialogue 
on the camera that didn't have the soundtrack mm. and you had to synchronize it all and make it all work it, it was an amazing feat to edit that at all you, you did a grand job With a number of external scenes still to be shot, I decided to move filming to the summer term, where I knew the weather would be on our side. And whilst indeed the sun did shine, the very real challenges facing the world suddenly took precedence over the trivial difficulties of a school film production. It was an incredibly tough decision to call an end to the filming, but it was clearly the only thing we could do with the onslaught of lockdown. I think it's up, up with all the with any of the films we've done, and that's why it's doubly disappointing that it couldn't be finished. And I'm still hoping that sometime uh, it, it could be got together again. I think comedy is dangerous, of course, because if it's not funny, then it fails completely. Um, but I think this one genuinely funny. We'd spent ten hours filming, had about five hours of footage, and so much more, and yet it all seemed that it had been for nothing. But that's not quite the case. In editing this now, I can understand it's difficult to see the immense challenges we faced in creating the film project, or at least the scenes we filmed. And all I would like to do is thank the many people who helped me in trying to get this film to the premiere. And whilst I understand that it may be difficult to see a future for the project as of now, all I will say is this. The minute that film is finished, I'll see you at the premiere. Dinner jackets on and champagne in hand. Thank you very much for watching.